Well, we're underneath the hood of a really, really neat vehicle. 1969 Plymouth GTX. And this particular guy has the air grabber hood option on it too. So you're getting cold air from the outside distributed to the correct uh, air grabber intake manifold, air cleaner, and carburetor. So it does have the, the uh, original cast iron intake on it and a Carter AFB AVS carburetor that would have been original equipment. Presto light distributor that would have come stock on this vehicle. Uh, it looks like the motor's been uh, uh, just cleaned up. I don't appear, it doesn't appear that it's ever been a part nor that it needs to be a part. It has a set of uh, Mopar finned aluminum valve pan covers. Um, High-end set of uh, high silicone plug wires that go with it, with the uh, separated uh, wire looms that go. Uh, fender tag still intact on the vehicle. Does have power brakes. Does not have power steering. Uh, it has the original clutch fan on it with the original uh, fan shroud that belongs with it. It does have a 26-inch high-capacity Mopar radiator that goes along with it. The um, uh, heater hoses are still hooked up to the uh, engine compartment. Uh, electronic ignition is on the car. Uh, original washer bottle is still in nice shape. Um, uh, this is the original core support on it. The numbers, it's hard to read them, but they are still intact and uh, readable between the radiator and the core support itself. And you can see it's never been disrupted or, or hurt in any way, so you know the car's never been in any trouble does have a very large set, I'm going to call them two inch, they may be two and an eighth inch large set of um, <coughs> exhaust headers on this car. Original type uh, hoses, uh, alternator looks to be fairly fresh. I tell you this engine compartment is as nice as you're ever going to find one. There's no leaks evident anywhere on the motor on top. Uh, Inner fenders just as uh, nice as they could possibly be. They're orange, uh, all painted orange the way they should be to match the outside color. Fantastic, fantastic um, engine compartment on this car. And what's really neat about it is this is the correct engine transmission and rear end. This guy's a four speed. It's a Dana rear end in it and it is the original driveline in this car and we believe the original uh, actual miles on the car also and it presents itself as such. Fantastic engine compartment. These motors are rated 375 horsepower. They were always way over 400 uh, from the factory. They didn't give it any extra horsepower for the air grabber. When you know cold dense air always adds the horsepower so uh, it's, it's well over 400 horsepower just the way it is. Got a nice little cam in it. A nice strong running car. Really a nice car. Let's see what's outside. Okay, you're at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And today our guest on the floor is a 1969 Plymouth GTX. This particular car, uh, kind of a special car. It came out of uh, Kevin's Cuddle Collection. He's owned it for a couple of years. Uh, it's been in his private collection. And he finally let go of it just for a room factor. So uh, we have it down here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach now. And this particular car is a numbers correct car, engine, transmission, and rear end. Fantastic condition also. All the panels are original on it. Car's just a knockout car. We're going to go over all the cosmetics on the outside for you now and see what we can find and what we need to go ahead and address ourselves prior to shipment to the car. Okay, it does have the air induction hood on it, you know, the cold air hood, air grabber hood with the uh, graded vents on it. It is a 440, that's the only way you could get a GTX, that or a 426 Hemi. This guy has the original 440 in it. The striping is the matte black type that uh, it was a performance striping package that uh, Mopar offered in uh, 68. It was a square around the center of the hood, 69. Uh, it became the stripes. So it's really a really attractive package. The hood fitment itself is really nice as far as the gap goes, but this side here has to come up, so that bumper needs to be adjusted so it lifts this up. This one is too high, so it needs to go down. Again, it's just, as you can see there, that this went down, that went up. All it is an adjustment, which we're, we're going to do here prior to uh, uh, the delivery of the car. Paint on the hood is fantastic. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, Tor Red, I think is the name of the color. 
but it's a, a fantastic paint job on the car. The finish is just phenomenal. Of course, satin black is satin black. Plymouth designation on the front. There's no pitting or anything whatsoever on it. Headlight basils still have the uh, argent finish around them, just the way they were from the factory. And no dinghies or marks on the uh, anodized aluminum trim around the uh, grill area. Same thing on this side here. Argent area just as nice as can be. Mopar grill, GTX designation in the center. Really nice front end on the car. Uh, bumper fitment. A little bit close on this side. That needs to go about a quarter of an inch that way and then it'll be right spot on. Bumper itself is just as straight and nice as you'll find. The chrome on it is just absolutely new. There's, uh, there's no marks or dinghies or scuffs or anything on the front bumper anywhere. Uh, the um, parking lights, amber, just the way they should be and nice and clean looking. Very, very nice and clean looking. So the front end of this car, other than a hood adjustment, it's just an absolute knockout car. Let's see what we can find on the uh, driver's side. Okay, driver's side of our Plymouth GTX 1969. Paint on this car is just stunning. Just absolutely stunning. Real nice fitment of the uh, side marker light. These GTXs were all flat black the whole way along the bottom one. That's just the way they, uh, they accentuated these cars when they were new. Nice fender to door fitment, the cowl, the hood, very, very nice fitment there. You can't fit much better than that. Vinyl top, obviously, and let me shoot that aside here a second. There's absolutely no marks or no raised portions or anything on it. It, it looks to be the uh, original vinyl top. I don't know that for sure, but it, it doesn't look like it's been replaced. Uh, drip rail, just as nice as you'd ever want to find, too. Tinted um, glass in the front. Correct wiper arms and blades on this car, both correct. Trim around the front windshield, no marks whatsoever. VIN tag still nice and clean and with the Chrysler logo on it and still intact. The transition where the uh, dashboard goes onto the base of the windshield, spot on, just as clean as could possibly be. The rubber is still nice and fresh at the base of the windshield, doesn't appear to have ever been out of the car. No cracks on the dashboard pad that goes uh, from one side to the other. It's nice and clean. Vent wings, no, no pitting whatsoever on the chrome around them. Just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Again, fitment on this thing is really nice and the paint's just exemplary. No uh, patina or defects whatsoever on the mirror itself, which is a remote mirror. Window fitment is spot on. You couldn't get water in here if you used a high pressure hose on it. You wouldn't get it in. Chrome on the door handles. They're original door handles. A little tiny bit of mark here and there, but the original chrome, really nice as can be. Again, look at the fitment of this uh, quarter panel to the door. GTX. I love that logo. GTX. Fantastic car. Wheel lip molding, same as the one in the front, just as nice as you're ever going to find. Side marker lamp, nice and flush fitment. Trim around the base of the uh, vinyl top is really, really nice as it is around the uh, back light. A couple of aftermarket speakers in the hatch shelf rack, and uh, it is absolutely flawless. There's no, uh, no marks or no distortions or no fading or anything on that hat shelf. Really looks good. Does have a set of 15 inch Kelsey Hayes um, Plymouth Road wheels with the correct centers also on them. Uh, great looking car. It is a GTX. It is not a Roadrunner. This is definitely upscale from a Roadrunner. Uh, 444 speed. Great color combination. Kelsey wheels. Let's see what's out back. Okay, back end of our 69 Plymouth GTX. Tore red. Okay, again, the gaps. Look at the gap that this rear deck has on it. It's like an eighth of an inch precision the whole way around. Now, it is a little higher than it should be. If you look, this deck is just a 
hair higher. We're going to have to get in there and, and trim the rubber so that it goes down to where it's supposed to be. Trim around the, uh, uh, on the basils around your rear tail lights, which are nice and clean yet with the argent on them. All original. This is original paint yet on it. Uh, both of them are really, really nice. I don't see any uh, issues whatsoever on them. Both lenses nice and clear. Um, a little tiny bit in the chrome. Um, we'll call it patina. A little minor pitting uh, where water's laid through the years on the very edge where it goes on to the color. Hardly noticeable, but it is there. GTX again designation. Um, filler panel between the uh, bumper and the rear deck just as nice and straight as could be. Bumper alignment. Bumper's right on in the back. The front one has to go over just a just a quarter of an inch, but this one is right on. Um, it, it's lined up as nice as you're ever going to find it. The correct style for 1969 exhaust tips on this car. Uh, the paint on the back of this car is the way it was on the side and in the front. You could not find a nicer paint job than this car has on it. And again, there wasn't a single chip or a mark or a ding or anything on the sides of it. I haven't found any imperfections in the paint whatsoever. Let's see what's on the other side. Okay, passenger side of our GTX. We've got one more side to go here. Uh, light fitment as nice as you're ever going to find. Again, the, the quarter panels, the paint, the fit, the finish, everything on this car is as nice as you're ever going to find in anything. Original tin. Yeah, somebody rolled these fender lips up. Let me check the other side. Didn't you? Bear with me a second. It's the same way. Both sides have been rolled up a little bit. So my guess is going to be somebody had some serious tires on the back of this at one point of its life. Probably to try to get some bite out of this thing. You know, these things made a lot of horsepower, a lot of torque, 440 Mopar. Um, at any rate, they are original. It is tin. It is not mudded up or anything. Uh, uh, wrong, it's just that it's rolled up inside, professionally done where it hasn't broken the, the seal or anything to the uh, uh, metal finish to the inner fender panel or anything. It's just, it, it, it's rolled up so it gives you clearance. Trim around the back window. Right on, spot on. Whiskers wipes the same as the other side, just as nice as you're ever going to find. GTX designation. Look at this. Amazing. Original handle. I mean, you could almost count them. One, two, three, four. Little tiny, tiny marks that you got to kind of look at an angle to see. Again, the window fitment. Look at this. Nice as it'll be. Drip rail, no marks whatsoever anywhere. Again, nothing on the vinyl top. Just as nice and tight and taut as can be. Around the front windshield. Again, no marks whatsoever. None. Look at this. Totally amazing. I'm assuming that's a power antenna, but I don't know. It's down in there. Wheel lift molding, side marker light. Again, this guy got to get it that way. Just about a quarter of an inch. I mean, this is well within production standards, but we're probably going to try to just tweak it over that way just a hair. We definitely got to do that hood, though. Um, 1969, original engine, transmission, rear end, four speed, Dana 60 carrier, and they were all pause attraction, they didn't make them without pausing. Uh, very, very heavy duty rear end, nobody's been able to break one of them. Uh, fantastic car, fantastic color. Uh, GTX uh, came out actually in 1967, and as soon as I saw a GTX uh, in 1967, I ran right down to the Chrysler dealer and ordered one. I had a red one with a black vinyl top, four-speed car. That was the first year for GTX. And then 68, of course, they made it. 69, 70, 71, um, 72. Fantastic, fantastic car. Uh, great color combination. It is a correct matching number car. Um, it, it's an upscale car from a Roadrunner. These cars came standard with bucket seats. They were never released with a bench seat. You had your chance of a, a center console that flopped down, a padded one, or a full center console. Those were your options, but they had bucket seats regardless. 
the only way you could get a GTX was with a 440 as a standard engine. 426 Hemi was the option. 383s were never offered in a GTX. Those were the only two engine options that you could get. Uh, this car is an example of one that you really need to take a look at. It's here at Hangsters. Uh, it's, it's one of the finest cars we have in the building. It came out of Kevin's private collection and it's been sitting up there for two years because he didn't want to let go of it. We finally got it off of him, so it's your chance to get it off of us. Take a look at it at Hangsters. We're in our 1969 Plymouth GTX. Uh, you can't mistake this one because it's the only one we have in the building. They're kind of a rare car. A lot of Roadrunners around, not too many GTXs. Uh, this car is just a fine, fine example of one. Uh, it, it just it's almost the way the car was released when it was new. I, I really can't see anything that's been replaced in it, honestly. I mean, the dashboard appears to be all original. All the original lumber on it uh, is, is unmessed with. Uh, the original wheel-type radio is still intact in it. Uh, all the switches are nice and clean. The um, dash itself, your instrument cluster, um, temperature gauge, uh, amps, the um, uh, fuel gauge, and a speedometer are all nice and crystal clear. And this guy has the optional tachometer in it also, so you do have a tack with it. Uh, it has a trio of gauges underneath also, um, auxiliary gauges. Uh, I'm going to assume that the original Chrysler AM radio doesn't function, but it does have a CD, higher end CD uh, changer underneath the dash, probably to go with the uh, uh, better speakers that are in the uh, hat rack. Steering wheel. <coughs> One little tiny, and I can't even fit my fingernail in it. I can't even begin to get it in. Uh, crack right here. Other than that, it's absolutely flawless. Uh, the horn ring itself still nice and resilient and padded. You know, with the with the uh, Plymouth uh, uh, crest on it. Again, GTX. This is a whole lot higher end than a Roadrunner. It has the uh, wood grain that transitions back onto the uh, door panels and then continues on to the uh, um, back uh, side panels also. Headliner, nice and tight as a drum. Uh, again, the hat rack I, I stated was really nice and clean. The uh, uh, carpeting is, if it isn't new, it is as new. Uh, it, it just, it looks like the original equipment part, carpeting still has the original door seals on it. Um, seat belts, front and rear, front and rear on this guy. I don't see any cracks on the dashboard. Um, sun visors are, are nice and original, intact the way they should be. None of the stitching is coming loose. Shoulder belts, another option on this car. Somebody really went all out on this thing. It's a, it's a really a great looking car. Uh, the fit, the finish, everything in it is just exemplary. Key to the whole operation. Look at this. One, two, three, four. Four speed. This arm did not come as a standard shifter arm in 1969. It would have had one that came up and back about this far, uh, and it would have been round. Uh, Hearst released those. This would have been very. This is a very hard arm to get. This is out of a uh, like a 63, 64 uh, Max uh, wedge car uh, or a, uh, a four-speed uh, uh, Plymouth Fury. Uh, that's what these vehicles uh, were fitted with. This big flat curved S-shaped uh, Hurst arm. Fantastic car. The condition of this thing is just as nice as you're ever going to find. I don't see a single thing that I can uh, point out that's uh, deficient in this car in any way. Armrests are original um, and they're not broken up or cracked up at all. Your chrome around them is still nice and fresh looking for, uh, for the year. Uh, this is a car you really got to take a look at. There, there aren't many GTXs around. They were expensive to buy new, a lot more money than a Roadrunner. And um, uh, this is one that we have at Hangsters, and it's the only one we have at Hangsters in a 1969 GTX. So, really, you should take a look at this car. One little tiny, tiny crack here, but we don't worry about that. Um, horn definitely works. The wipers. Definitely work. Tachometer working. Temperature gauge coming up. Fuel gauge working. Alternator functioning as it should. Left turn signal working. Right turn signal working. 
We have some auxiliary gauges here, water temperature coming up, oil pressure where it's supposed to be, and fuel pressure. Now they do have an electric fuel pump on here. Check this side even. Watch this. A reverse light. Reverse. I mean, those are still working after 50 years. Um, what else we have to check? I don't even bother the radio. I know it's not going to work. No, it doesn't work. Uh, other than that, I think we're ready to go for a ride here. See how this guy works. Slight, but it is there. We got to figure out probably tire pressure. Let's see what the brakes do. Brake stop sprayers could be, but it does pull to the left. seem to be pulling, look. Straight as an arrow now, no hands. No hands, still no hands. Still no hands. Must have been just brake dragon or something there just for a second until I used the brakes. Now it's okay again. Nice rig. See temperature gauge stop, tack right the way it's supposed to be. All your auxiliary gauges are functioning the way they should. Nice setup. Nice car. Hi, we're underneath our 1969 Plymouth GTX 440 Air Grabber 4 speed Dana rear end muscle car. Now, this is a car. This is serious Detroit muscle here. Um, heavy duty sway bar in the front, heavy duty torsion bars on this vehicle, disc brakes in the front of this one, new shocks in the front, subframes on the car are absolutely as new. They could not be any nicer and fresher than they are. Uh, the uh, steering system itself, your tie rod ends all look nice and clean and fresh. There's not very many miles on this car. It, 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 if I remember correctly, it's somewhere around 30 some thousand. And I believe it to be actual miles on the car, judging from the interior and all the uh, undercarriage appointments and everything. I'm going to I'm going to call it a real mile car. Uh, the headers themselves are they're at least two inch, possibly two and an eighth, three and a half collectors going into two and a half uh, primary tubes back to the turbo mufflers. Uh, it is a uh, it's a Mopar oil pan. Uh, looks like a Milliden pan, but it's probably made by. Uh, uh, Milden 4 Mopar. It's going to be about a, uh, I want to say an 8 quart pan, Lakewood style. I don't know if it is for sure, but it's a Lakewood style blow shield on it. High torque starter, correct motor, correct numbers matching engine for this car also. The um, uh, 
inner fender panels, all your uh, metal pieces that go down, your drop down, should transition over to the uh, uh, subframes. No one's made any attempt to jack it up on those through the years. Just as nice and fresh as can possibly be. The um, transmission, of course, heavy duty Chrysler new process uh, uh, four speed tranny, totally indestructible. Uh, subframe uh, joining section that goes across that is also the uh, transmission support is just as nice and uh, as clean as it could possibly be on this vehicle. Purse shifter, of course, and all the linkage is nice and fresh looking. The uh, floor pans themselves are the original floor pans. There's no question. They have not been replaced. Have not. Uh, they are the original pans. They go over and uh, pinch weld onto the uh, rocker panels, which are the original rocker panels on the car. Uh, everything on this car is just as nice and fresh as you'd ever want to find. Uh, a lot of originality here. You're not going to find one much nicer than this. This is. It's not a rotisserie restoration. It didn't need to be. This is the way the car uh, left the factory with this type of sound deadener material on the floor pans. And again, uh, there's no. I don't see a single jack mark on the subframes anywhere. At least not so far anywhere. Uh, we'll see uh, once we get in the back. It has a. Uh, Someone's replaced the fuel lines on this side. It does have an electric uh, supplemental pump on the uh, passenger side rear here in front of the uh, uh, torque box uh, for the spring shackles. The uh, park and brake assembly is uh, functional and intact. Entire park and brake assembly. Uh, well, I can't see anything at all. New universal joint on it. There's no leaks on the uh, uh, tail shaft to the transmission. A little tiny bit of oil seepage here, not really enough to, uh, to drip or anything, but um, a little tiny bit of dampness there. I, you know, not enough to even address. We'll probably wipe it and tighten, uh, tighten some nuts and bolts here and there, but uh, uh, you can see that there's no leaks on the engine itself. The oil pan, everything's been out and freshened up. Uh, the blow shield on it has uh, uh, no oil seepage or anything. Not that I can detect anywhere. A little tiny bit of dampness, but like I said, not enough to even drip. Uh, heavy duty drive shaft, of course, with a Mopar. With that much power, you need something that big and heavy duty. Uh, we're halfway through the car, and there's absolutely nothing that's uh, a detrimental on it. The original brake line's still intact and still going toward the rear. Uh, nice car. We're halfway done. Nice car. Again, Flowmaster mufflers in it. Um, Subframes in the rear are absolutely flawless. There's no jack marks, uh, no dense marks whatsoever in them. Uh, really, a really a great system. Appears to be two and uh, I'm going to say two and a half again. Pipes transitioning out of the flow masters and going toward the rear, which would be correct for a, uh, a '69 uh, uh, GTX Plymouth. Someone's added a set of traction bars on this particular vehicle. Why I have no idea. But they are there, maybe just for looks. They certainly don't uh, provide any function. Chrysler's already addressed that issue with you, with the uh, suspension. They have six leafs on this side, seven leafs on this side uh, to compensate for torque bias. And as far as the traction bars goes, there's already a pinion snubber and a plate on the floor pans to go ahead and stop that where these snubbers on the traction bars would, would do that normally for you, but it's already been addressed by Chrysler, so why those are there, I'm, they must be for decoration, I guess. I don't know. A set of air shocks in the back so that you can uh, adjust the height of this uh, uh, vehicle. Original pans in the rear. The floor pans have never been uh, um, messed with or altered in any way or replaced or repaired. Drop downs in the quarters still have the tabs on them. The uh, subframes in the back are just the same as they are the rest of the way through this vehicle. Absolutely as new. We're still with the original Chrysler uh, undercoating on them. The um, <clears throat> correct exhaust tips are on the uh, uh, pipes going out the back. It does have the original gas tank in it yet also. And the big guy here, Dana 60 Carrier, totally indestructible. There's not a motor out there that will break that rear end. Uh, it's even stronger than a 9 inch Ford. This is 9 and 3 quarter inch ring gear. Really heavy duty. 3 quarter ton Dodge truck material. So you see the undercarriage of this vehicle. It has a lot of originality to it. It doesn't have any issues whatsoever with rust or perforations or not even a paint blister anywhere. Uh, everything on this vehicle is as tight and straight and nice as you'll ever find. Uh, 69 Plymouth GTX. Numbers correct. 
440 four-speed car. It's at Hangsters in Daytona, and it's the only one we have, and it's going to be a tough one to find another duplicate of. Take a look at it.